it can often be very hard to understand what is really going on in the world. But once you see the right angle, everything becomes clear. The whole point of our modern society seems to be to transform humanity into a giant human ant colony. And the first thing that you should notice about ants is that they don't have a brain. They may have some nerve endings in their bodies, but those are only there for them to follow rules. The rules are laid out by the colony itself, which acts as a sort of hive mind. In a human setting, for example, when you hear that the European Union is supposed to be a rule-based order, what does that really mean? It means what they really want is for all people in Europe to just live by the rules and not think for themselves anymore. They're not just doing this in Europe. The same thing is happening in China, also a rule-based order where they use a social credit score and financial laws like freezing your bank account to make you comply. They are literally waging war on your mind. That's something Alex Jones would say, but it's real. In order, to, um, for example, Sam Harris, a so-called intellectual from America, uh, he has written a book about the fact that you don't have a free will. If you read his book and his other books, you'll find out that what he really wants to do is to program people's minds. He wants to decide, determine what people are allowed to believe, what their convictions may be allowed to be, and so on and so forth. He wants to create a programmable humanity. Luckily, so far, no one has really figured out how to program people's minds while well, they're trying it every day with the news, the propaganda, the social media. But there are still some people, presumably the sort of people who listen to my voice, who can think for themselves. You don't take everything I say at face value. I, you probably question the things that I say. You don't believe everything I say is true. And that's fine. That's the whole damn point. But the people like Klaus Schwab or Yuval Harari, that professor from Jerusalem, they, they dream of this. They dream of making humanity, of human beings, individuals, completely, perfectly programmable. And the first step toward programming you would be to program your DNA. This may be what the past few years have been all about. They perceive the world as a material world where there is a code, our DNA code, that they think if they could just change it or manipulate it, we will end up behaving in ways that our masters want us to behave. As though they believe that our behaviors are determined by our DNA, that our thoughts, our psychological, uh, our psychological angles are all determined by these 20,000 or so genes interacting with one another and that the gene code, if you could just change it, then we would all become the new man of socialism. We would become that programmable robot, that humanoid robot that will just follow orders, follow the rules, do as you're told. Well, you know what, we'll give you some social credits to get along, you know, and we'll allow you to rape kids if you want. Basically, a rule-based order would make people like a severe rule-based order where there are only rules and there is no more freedom left. And they, this is what they're saying now is that freedom is a pathology. Freedom is a sickness. Freedom is an illness. People who want freedom, they're just white supremacists. But if you remove all freedom and replace social life, replace human life in the world with nothing but rule following, that obviously will give people the real pathology. That's the thing that will make people completely mentally ain. That's why you will go completely insane because you have no more freedoms, no more say in your own life. You're just a body. And have you noticed that this is how our political opponents speak about human beings? They call us bodies, bodies in motion. Bodies in motion, mean, you mean souls. Don't you mean spirits? Don't you mean people with a free will? No, 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 that's not what they mean at all. They don't want you to have a soul. They don't want you to have a spirit or a mind or a free will. They don't want you to have any of these things. They want you to follow the rules, like ants in an ant colony. Now, mind you that ants in an ant colony, they're all female. The soldier ants are female. 
There are very few males that are only used for the insemination process, but once the queen's inseminated, she may keep a, a king on the side, but once she starts breeding her eggs like 30,000 a day, she doesn't need males anymore. All the, all the worker ants and all the soldier ants are, are female. So you see what they're trying to do. City life represents the life of ants, of human ants. They don't want you to live in the suburbs anymore because that would be like off colony, outside of the urban colony, where you might live your own life and have your own rules in your own house, in your own home. No, the rules have to be universal, applicable everywhere, including in your own home. This goes against human nature. The problem here is that the more intelligent people are the very ones most susceptible to following the rules. And let me explain that for a bit. The rules are many. There are millions of rules and soon to be billions of rules. If you read the Talmud, for example, it's a book, a Jewish book of rules uh, containing almost 10 million words and probably a million rules or so that Jews have to live by, which is effectively impossible and that's what it's all about because it's impossible to follow all those rules because the rules are also internally conflicting with one another it drives you nuts to the point where you will cease to think for yourself at all except if you're extremely bright the extremely smart people the very highly educated people they and start rationalizing the rules. They start rationalizing the internal conflict and say, oh, that's actually normal. Oh, that's actually how it's supposed to be. And they can make you believe, they can cook up stories, they can invent narratives, imaginations, to convince the general public who might not be as educated, might not be as smart, but to convince the general public that their reservations, their concerns are all fiction. Your concerns aren't real. You don't really want freedom. You don't want to support the truckers in Canada. You just want to be told what to do. And here's the reason why. And they give you this massive baloney story, total horseshit, but they tell you every second of the day. Every time you turn on the news, they tell you that story. Every time you turn on the radio, it's that story again. Every time you look on your social media, there's that story again. And they tell you it so often and over and over and over again, you don't really want freedom. You want to be told what to do. And here's our bullshit story we made up to convince you that we're right. And after some time, slowly, people get tired of this bullshit and they submit to it. They get tired of the bullshit and they submit to it. And this is how it works. And this is what our job is. The job of the resistance also has some smart people in it. We need some smart leaders, but we need those smart ones who realize that it's not their job to bullshit the people into slavery, but to tell the truth. The truth is we were all born free. with a soul that we share with our people, with a mind of our own. And anybody who tells you otherwise is lying to you. <laughs>